We're gonna be doing a little inequality introduction here. As I'm writing things, you may need to pause the video so that way you have enough time to write things as well. First, we're gonna go through what the inequality symbols mean. The word inequality means not equal to, inequal. So these are the different symbols that are ways to express that it's not exactly equal to a number. This first symbol with the equal sign with the line through it means not equal to. And you might also see it expressed as is not or does not. The next symbol means greater than or equal to. You might have already been familiar with just the greater than symbol by itself, but when it has the line underneath it, it means that it could also be equal to that number. So we call that greater than or equal to. And some other words that mean greater than or equal to would be at least, no less than, or a minimum, or just the word minimum. Similarly, this next one means less than or equal to. It could be less than the number that we're talking about, or it could be equal to the number that we're talking about. And some other words that mean um, less than or equal to would be at most, no more than, up to, or maximum. Remember to pause the video if I'm writing too fast for you. This one you might be familiar with already. It just means greater than. And greater than could also mean, um, or could be said as exceeding or exceeds, larger than, um, bigger than, anything else that would mean something big. This last symbol would be less than. And some other words that would mean that would be below, smaller, anything else that would imply something small. When we talk about inequalities, we always include a number line with it. And we're going to be talking about how to make that number line in a moment. But we're going to be using open circles and closed circles. First, I'm just going to tell you what they mean. And then I'm going to show you how to use them. When I say open circle, I mean a regular old circle like that. And when I say closed circle, I mean a circle that's colored in. It's closed. If the circle is open, then the number is not included in our answer. And I'm gonna show you what that means. If the circle is closed, it means the number is included in our answer. And this is what I'm gonna show you next. Now I'm gonna to put together the def different definitions I've shown you to show you how we would graph these inequalities on a number line. So if you've been confused up to this point, let's see if these examples make it more clear. This first one uses the greater than symbol. X is greater than three. That means X could be anything bigger than three and it cannot be three itself. So on the number line, we're gonna put an open circle on the three because it cannot be equal to three. The number is not included. And then I'm gonna draw an arrow to the right, which is pointing towards all the numbers that are bigger than three. Some people like to use a highlighter. So this is saying that X could be four or five or six or even three and a half. It could be anything bigger than three, but it can't be three itself. Going to my next example, I'm gonna start by putting a circle on six and then I'm gonna think about what to do. Well, I see that X is less than six, so it cannot be six itself. It, it's not or equals two, it's just less than six. And I want the arrow pointing to all the numbers that are less than six. So these would be all the numbers that are less than six. So, so far, we've seen that we use an open circle when I use this symbol or this symbol. Now we're gonna come up to some closed circle examples because the closed circle examples mean that the number can be part of the solution too. So that would be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So if X is less than or equal to negative two, I always start by putting my circle on the number. This time, since X could be equal to negative two, it has that little line underneath the inequality. I'm gonna color the circle in and make it closed. X could be negative two, or it could be any of the numbers that are less than it. 
So in this example, x could be negative 10, or it could be negative 5, or it could be negative 2, but it can't be anything bigger than negative 2. The next one is x is greater than or equal to negative, it's a positive 3. So I start on my 3, and since it could be equal to, I color it in, it has that little line under the symbol, and then I want all the numbers that are greater than 3. So x could be 3, 3 and a half, 4, 10, a million, any of those things. All right, next is x is greater than or equal to 6. So I start with my 6. It could be equal to 6, so I'm going to color it in. I'm going to close that circle, and then it could be greater than 6. It could be any of these over here. So the numbers that are getting colored in or highlighted, those are all possible solutions. We don't know exactly what x is, but x could be any of the things that we're coloring it in. Let's look at the next page. So now we're getting to some trickier ones, some compound inequalities. So this is more of an extension, but let's take a look. So I see that um, we have x is greater than 1, actually, or it could be less than 1. So it gave me it in both ways, actually. So this is a kind of a funky example. I see that it could always be equal to 1. Both of those symbols have the underline on it. But then it's telling me that it could be less than 1 or it could be greater than 1. This is a goofy example. It could be anything. So next, they change it up a little bit. We have to read this first part of it backwards. I'm going to flip this part around so I could read it. X is greater than negative 1. Okay, so I know I'm going to have a circle on negative 1. And that inequality sign is not underlined, so it can't be negative 1. I'm going to leave the circle open. The other half of the inequality is telling me that x is less than 1. So I'm going to put an open circle there too. Well, if x is greater than negative 1, that would be all of the numbers going this way. And if x is less than positive 1, that would be all the numbers going this way. So the overlap would be between them. So for my answer, I'm going to just draw a line between them and highlight that part because that's what overlaps with the two. Let's try the next one the same way. So I'm going to flip this part around so I could read it more easily. X is greater than 4. So it's saying X is greater than 4 and X is less than 9. So here's my 4 and here's my 9. If x has to be more than 4 but less than 9, it's going to be everything between them. So x can't be 4, but it could be 5, 6, 7, 8, or any kind of fraction. And it can't be 9 either. All right, now we have some normal ones. x is less than 2. So here's my 2. I'm not going to color it in. And I want all of the numbers that are less than 2. That's all of these. Next one's normal too, x is greater than or equal to 10. So this time I'm gonna color it in because x could be equal to 10, it has that little line underneath it. And I don't have much room, but I want it to be numbers that are more than 10. So it kind of goes off the graph. Here's more compound inequalities. x is less than or equal to five. So it um, is gonna be colored in on five because that I saw the or equal to symbol. And then also, x could be greater than 8. So x could be less than 5. x could be greater than 8. I'm just doing two inequalities on the same picture. So x could be 0. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. But then it skips 7 and 8. I'm sorry, it skips 6 and 7. Once we get to 8, it's an open circle, so it can't be 8. But it could be 8.5 or 9, 10, and so on. One more compound inequality. I'm going to flip this first one over so I can see it more easily. I like to have x on the left. x is greater than 3. That's not going to be colored in because there's no or equal to. The other part is x is less than or equal to 6. So let's see. x is greater than 3 would point this way. x is less than 6 would point this way. So it looks like I'm looking for the overlap. So I'm going to do between them and highlight that. Those are more extensions. Now there's some to try on your own. So you guys are going to do the circle and the arrow and um, the highlighting if you'd like to do the highlighting. Go ahead and try those on your own. Thanks for watching.